room. Um, it doesn't look like the Bhutan room anymore because it doesn't have the Bhutan um, bedspread and curtains. Um, but it had this beautiful um, gold and orange um, embroideries, textiles from Bhutan that Dad had got there because he had originally thought of making the man who would be king in Bhutan, you know, the lost Himalayan kingdom. And it was very uh, closed then. Nobody went to Bhutan. I mean, it's still hard to, to get in there. Um, and as it happened, you know, he didn't get it to happen. He had originally wanted to make it, I think, with Bogart and Gable. And then he had wanted to make it, I don't know, I can't remember now. I think there was another pairing anyway, and he ended up doing it with Connery and Kane in Morocco. Um, but he brought these, these textiles back, and so the, the walls were dark blue. Um, and yeah, and this was, this was my room for a few months. And then I moved back down to the little house, and the, the panic, the financial panic seemed to be over, and um, things went back to normal, as I thought. Um, and then the next summer, I went to stay with my grandparents in Long Island again, and uh, at the end of the summer, I was told I wasn't coming back here. That was it. That was the end. So I, they used to do that to me. They would tell me, they would send me somewhere for the summer and then tell me I wasn't going back to wherever my home had been the previous year. So that was how I left. I didn't know I was leaving St. Clarence when I did. I just want to check and see. So this is my dad's room. Um, his bed. This is so funny. Because I suppose his bed must have been there, but I remember it being up there. Um, and I wonder if that's my memory or if they've just shifted the room around. I don't know. Um, but I remember it used to feel like a very long way from the door to his bed. He had a giant um, red velvet upholstered canopy bed, very ornately carved. And uh, he used to be sitting in it in the morning reading the, with the newspaper in his breakfast. And it did feel like a long way from here to there. There was, um, there was green flock wallpaper. Well, there weren't so many Indian restaurants in those days. So flock wallpaper wasn't quite such a funny thing. It was kind of glamorous and Venetian when dad had flocked wallpaper. And it was dark green and I used to like the way it felt against the, the brass of the light switch. This is still the same light switch cover. And would he have been, when you say he was working, what, when he worked, was he receptive to you coming in? Do you want to come in for a minute? Yeah, I don't know that he was really, um, I don't know that he was really working. It was the morning, you know, he was reading the newspaper and having his breakfast. And yes, absolutely, he was, um, he was receptive to us coming in. Usually it was when Danny was here, my brother Danny, um, who lived in Rome most of the time with his mother. But uh, they would come for holidays, Christmas and Easter and summer. And um, Danny wasn't as much in awe of dad as I was. Um, partly maybe because he'd known him all his life and I hadn't. I first met him when I was four. Um, so da I would come up, Danny used to sleep in the, in the little house also with Nurse and me, but his mother Zoe used to stay in the Napoleon room. Um, and so we would come up here in the mornings and find Zoe and say good morning to her and then we would come in here and Danny would run straight to Dad in his bed and say good morning, Dada. And I kind of would hang back and, and then Follow Danny. I was used to follow Danny everywhere. He was two years older than me. Do you want to just get more of the other room by coming over here and and um, and I, w I want about reading. Did you ever read with your father? Because I think I remember in your memoir was there you you mentioned something about an interest in trying to I'm trying to suppose bring in Irish literature in some kind of weird way, but it may not work. Yeah, that's that. a, it's a bit later. It does. It's not really here. Here I was reading Enid Blyton. <laughs> trying to keep it secret. Um, your yeah, I don't think that really kind of. Uh, Are you aware of it? Um, not really. I don't think I can usefully say anything about and, that. And what about things like would he have been? Um, so I read in one of his 
in one of, of so many of the memoirs that he played backgammon, and I wonder, did you play backgammon? Yes, he used to play backgammon a lot, but I, I didn't. I used to play backgammon with him a lot too, but not here. It was later. I left St. Clarence when I was seven. Um, that summer when I was in Long Island outside New York and was told I wasn't coming back it was the summer I turned eight. Um, and it was a couple of years after that in, uh, in Mexico that Dad taught me to play backgammon. That's but, brilliant. Uh, yeah, I guess he used to play with his friends here in the study. That's great. Brilliant. So, um, so I think they've, they've taken a chunk out of the time that